Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday, number 140 on the Manalik. I'm John, as always, and we've got ourselves another pack of Rivals of Ixalan. This format, it can go away at some point soon, and it will with Masters 25 and then eventually Dominaria. But for now, we're going to crack this pack open, see what's in it, and see what we would take pack one, pick one, if this was a draft. Up first, we have Sailor of Means. Sailor of Means is two and a blue for a creature human pirate. It's a 1-4, and when it enters the battlefield, you make yourself a treasure. I really like Sailor of Means. I think it's a very good card. Would I ever first pick it? I don't think so. I don't believe in that four-color, five-color treasure deck that people talk about. I think it happens way too rarely. I would pick this relatively highly, but I don't think I would ever first pick a Sailor of Means. Do love them, though. Up next is Sun Collared Raptor. Sun Collared Raptor is one in a red for a creature dinosaur. It's a 1 2 with trample. Pay two in a red. Sun Collared Raptor gets plus three plus zero until end of turn. Utterly filler. Very 23rd card. You cut this if you can. If you need to play it, you don't feel horrible. You never, ever first pick it. Up next is Moment of Triumph. A single white mana. Instant uh, target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn, and you gain two life. Fine enough combat trick. You'll play it. You'll feel happy about it. You would never feel happy first picking it. Up next is Dusk Charger. Dusk Charger is three and a red for a creature horse. It's a three, three, it's got to send if you have the city's blessing. It's actually a five, five. This is surprisingly fine. Three, three for four is okay. It doesn't feel great. And if you can relatively consistently hit the, uh, the blessing, a five, five actually blocks really well. And blocking is something that you need to get to in this format. You can block in this format. We have Sailor of Means. We saw Sailor of Means. It's still exceptionally hard, though. And a 5-5 five five helps make it slightly less hard. I would never first pick a Dusk Charger, however. Hunt the Weak is a card that I would first pick. Three and a green for a sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights target creature you don't control. I still really hate that Hunt the Weak and Savage Stomp are in the same format, despite being essentially identical cards um but here it is and it's a really good card it, it's just good I, I would consider first picking it it's not the best first pick i'd prefer a chupacabra or an impale but hunt the week is still fine mutiny is a card that i still don't think is amazing as some people say it's a single red mana for a sorcery target creature and opponent controls deals damage to equal to its power to another target creature that player controls this has just been a shock for me. It's always just been a shock. And that's fine. Shock is okay. Shock is better when it's instant speed. Shock is better when you can play it with one creature on the board. Shock is better when it goes to the face. But this generally kills a 2-2. It doesn't really kill that much more in my experience. It's still a fine card. It's a card that I would begrudgingly first pick. And it's a card that I would always play. So we can keep Mutiny in the frame even though I do not think it wins against Hunt the Weak. Up next is Gleaming Barrier. Gleaming Barrier is two generic mana for an artifact creature wall. It's no four, it's a defender. And when it dies, you make a treasure. If you desperately need a blocker, here you go. If you desperately need an artifact for, I guess, your desperate castaways, here you go. But I don't think the desperate castaways deck is looking for an 04 defender. So Gleaming Barrier doesn't have a super big home, maybe in the controlling deck, but you're going to know when you want this card, and you're going to get this card. You're going to get this card 13th pick, 14th pick. So don't waste a first pick on it. Don't waste a first through sixth pick on it. Up next is Cleansing Ray. Cleansing Ray is one and a white for a sorcery. Choose one. Destroy target vampire. Destroy target enchantment. Both of those are fantastic out of the sideboard. You would never main deck this card. But out of the sideboard being the white doom blade against the white black vampire deck or destroying the scary legendary enchantment or destroying a one with the wind or whatever this card does a ton of work out of the sideboard but it is just a sideboard card so it's never ever ever going to be a first pick up next is secrets of the golden city secrets of the golden city is one blue blue for a sorcery it's got to send draw two cards but if you have the blessing draw three cards instead it's fine. It's fine. If you're in a, a late game controlling deck, then this will draw you some cards. Might even draw you an extra card. And that's cool. That's fine. It's not exciting. You don't go out of your way to play it. If you've got a spot and you have it, cool. But you don't pick it highly. Our final common is a Roska Relic. A Roska Relic's three generic mana for an artifact. It's got to send. Tap to add a colorless to your mana pool. Tap, sack it. 
you gain three life and you draw a card only if you are hashtag blessed. A Roska Relic just doesn't get there. Uh, three mana for a rock is not super exciting, not in the aggressive formats that we've had over the past year and a half, two years. Um, sacking it and gaining three life and drawing a card if you have the blessing is not that great either. So a Roska Relic just doesn't really have a home. I generally never play this. Certainly don't pick it highly. Our first on common is Stone Quarry, the red white tap land. Uh, never, ever, ever first pick. If you are red white, if you are splashing red or splashing white, here you go. You want this. You want this relatively highly pack two, relatively late pack one, but never a first pick. Pride of the Conquerors is up next. One and a white for an instant. Uh, it's got to send. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. But if you're blessed, then they get plus two, plus two until end of turn. Very good in the go wide deck, uh, be it black, white, be it red, white, be it whatever white. Uh, it does some serious work. It's never a first pick, but once you're going down that route, you're pretty happy to have it. Our last on common is Oathsworn Vampire. It's a bear that enters tapped. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 Vampire Knight. But if you gained life, you can cast it from your graveyard, so that's cool, I guess. It still enters the battlefield tapped, so it's still going to be another entire turn before you can block with it to have it die and then recast it again. So you've got a blocker every other turn, I guess. It's fine. If I'm deep into the Black White Vampire deck, I'll take it and play it, but it's a pretty low pick for me. Our rare is not going to make this pack any better. Storm the Vault. Two blue red for legendary enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. That's it. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you have five or more artifacts, probably treasure tokens, you transform it. So after all that work, after all that combat damage, what do we get? We get a land that taps for mana or it taps for blue for each artifact you control. We don't have a blue fireball or anything in this format, so that's not really that exciting, and we're not really flooding the board with artifacts generally. So this card just does nothing on either side of it. I, I, I don't want either side of this card, certainly not for the cost of four mana, certainly not for the cost of a card. Storm of the Vault's bad. It should be a last pick, and should just never play it. So Storm of the Vault is out, and we have ourselves a bad bad pack we are looking at hunt the week or mutiny and we already talked about this i am on hunt the week let me know what you were on were you on hunt the week were you on mutiny is there another card in there that you think was better than that let me know because i don't know what it would have been tell me in the comments below as always if you have any questions comments or suggestions you can find me on twitter at the mana leak that's l-e-e-k like the vegetable not the card you can also find me at facebook.com slash mana leak twitch.tv slash mana leak and patreon.com slash mana leak if you like the content click that thumbs up button click subscribe if you want to see more and if you do have questions comments or suggestions let me know otherwise i'll see you all next time and masters 25 is coming soon